How to use the alt drift. The alt drift are these anodized aluminum parts in the hub and suspension bearing press system. The alt drift basically comprises of two parts. An alt drift, which is a drift with a threaded hole that's offset from the center of the drift, and an alt rod. It has a threaded end and a six millimeter hex end. Now, these two parts work in conjunction with the rest of the hub and suspension bearing press system to remove the first bearing in a BSB configuration. That's where you have a bearing, a spacer, and another bearing. This is common in hubs, free hubs, and suspension, like on either side of a seat post or in a linkage. There are three requirements that need to be met for the alt drift to work. The first requirement is that the spacer in between the two bearings needs to be able to move off of its axis by one millimeter. This exposes a little bit of the far side bearing that the alt drift can leverage up against. Once the bearing spacer is moved off of its axis, the alt drift can go in and securely contact the bearing inner ring off to the side. And then when the tool is turned, the alt drift applies force to the bearing in this direction that varies around the axis of the stud, ensuring a straight and controlled removal. The second requirement is that you need a suitable leveraging surface on the part. That surface needs to be flat, it needs to be perpendicular to the bearing, and it needs to be of suitable size to support the tool. Now, this doesn't seem to be a problem for hubs or free hubs, but for suspension components, you may not have a suitable surface to leverage against. If that's the case, your manufacturer never intended for you to use a bearing press to remove that bearing. So you may have to resort to a punch and a hammer or a blind bearing puller. Let's talk about leveraging parts in the hub and suspension bearing press system. A leveraging part is characterized by a surface to leverage up against the part you're trying to remove the bearing out of, as well as clearance for the bearing to be removed into. This part is called the stop OAL, and it is designed to pull a few different duties. Uh, one of the duties is to press up against the drive side of a hub. This large surface will handle a lot of different diameters here. And the stop OAL also have a very large clearance area for the internal axle that's often sticking out of a rear hub. If you're removing the outboard side bearing of a free hub, an XDR or an XD free hub, the stop OAL is also specifically sized for this end. It leverages and it centers, so you have a nice stable surface to remove that bearing. The remainder of these parts all have a bit of a universal design. They work in conjunction with the step to create a cup for the bearing to be removed into. All of these parts fit onto the step. This part is called the sleeve long and it is specifically designed to leverage up against the center lock disc mount. It leverages and centers so you have a nice secure surface. This part is called the sleeve six. This part has two different wall thicknesses on it. Uh, the thick side is designed for the six bolt disc mount and it can be used with the screws removed or with the screws in place. This thick surface will butt up against the screw heads and that's all fine. The thinner side is for when you need a large bearing clearance area but you don't have a lot of diameter to work with. The step can fit into either side to give you the thin end or the thick end to work with. Speaking of, the rest of these parts all give you a lot of 
a lot of options for pressing up against suspension or other surfaces like free hubs for instance so in this free hub if you're trying to remove this bearing you need clearance for the bearing but you also don't want to contact this pawl retaining ring so you, you pick a sleeve that has clearance for the bearing but also doesn't touch the retaining ring you don't want to leverage up against something like that so by having a lot of different sleeves to choose from you have options uh, micro spline for instance uh, I think this one fits yeah this one fits nicely up against a micro spline end uh, this one I think fits up against uh, HG yeah and in the case of if you pick up the standalone alt D2 kit for the alt drift it doesn't have the stop away out but for XD and XDR this sleeve fits nicely on that end so a lot of different options for leveraging with this system and the third requirement is the alt drift fits bearing IDs of 15, 17, 18, 20, and 25 millimeters. Let's use the alt drift to remove the first bearing in a part. What I've got here is a new generation Project 321 front hub. This hub has a BSB configuration, two bearings with an internal spacer. This internal spacer will move off to the side enough to expose the inner ring on the far side for the alt drift to press up against. It's also a 17 millimeter ID, so it fits the alt drift. So with working with a hub, I like to leverage up against the disc brake mount. This is a standardized size, it's a center lock, and the other standardized a configuration is a six bolt and I've got great leveraging parts for that so let's remove this bearing out of the disc side so let's choose the parts let's start from the pressing end and work towards the leveraging end so first part you're gonna need uh, is the stud and gonna need a stud then you're gonna need the alt rod you're gonna need an alt drift. Now the alt drift has to be the largest alt drift to fit inside the bearing ID and bearing ID is a 17 millimeter so you use the 17 millimeter drift. Next part you're going to need is you're going to need a small pilot. This is similarly sized the largest one that fits inside the bearing. Next piece you're going to need is an o-ring to hold the pilot in place and then on the leveraging end we're going because this is a center lock we're going to use the sleeve long which fits onto the center lock mount grab the universal step which fits onto the sleeve long and then finally you're going to need a threaded piece of hardware now you can use the nut you could use the handle or you can use the stud stop. I like using the stud stop because it makes quick work out of this. Now it's just a matter of assembling. So grab your stud, grab your alt drift, thread the alt drift on, leave about three quarters of an inch to thread the alt rod onto. When that bottoms, thread back the alt drift. It just needs to be finger tight. Now this is ready to be put into the part. So we're removing the disc side bearing. So insert it from the opposite side. Now, if it doesn't go past the bearing, that means you're hitting the internal spacer. Now it may have shifted during your disassembly. So you're gonna wanna recenter that inner spacer. So this actually usually, usually works. So. There, now the alt drift slips past the bearing, so the alt drift is probably in the middle of the hub here. So now it's just a matter of pushing off the internal 
spacer off to the side. This is exposing the bearing inner ring for the alt drift to press up against. You can feel it with your fingers, it kind of goes book. So now, if you slide it, it butts up against the bearing inner ring. So you can see that. So let's hold that in position by installing the pilot there. Now it's held in place. If you can't get this pilot to fit inside the bearing, you know the pilot does fit inside the bearing. If you can't get it inside the bearing in this, that means the internal spacer hasn't moved off its axis enough to use the alt drift. In that case, you might have to use a blind bearing puller or something to remove that bearing. So then slide the O-ring on to hold the pilot in place so that nothing moves. And then it's a matter of installing the leveraging tools. There, the sleeve long is installed. The step fits up against there. Everything is very solid here. Install your piece of hardware now. That's nice and square, so the stud stop's gonna work. Now it's just a matter of tightening this end of the tool. Do not tighten this end of the tool. If you do tighten this end, it's essentially like hitting the bearing ID on just one side. The bearing could get cockeyed, so do not turn this end. Hold this stationary. And it's just a matter of turning this. Now, as you turn this side, for every revolution, the alt drift will be pulled in this direction, the pitch of the thread, which is 1.25 millimeters. So after half a turn of this, if you haven't felt the bearing cut loose, disassemble everything and check to make sure everything is okay. If it does break loose, just continue turning and the bearing will pop out. So here we go. The bearing's already cut loose. I can feel it because it's just turning. It's turning quite, quite easily. And there, I can feel it pop out the side. So remove the parts. There, the hub, the bearing is out of the hub. Here's the spacer and here is the bearing. There we go. Solid and confident removal. The Alt Drift tool works on many different kinds of parts, hub, free hub, and suspension parts like seat posts or linkages. So if you want some diagrams to show you how to configure the tool to work on the different parts, head on over to the instructional diagrams page. Here you'll find hubs, free hubs, and suspension examples. Look for remove first bearing in these and you'll get a diagram that shows you what parts to use and maybe some helpful tips. So there's a lot of information there, so explore away.